I'm sure y'all have seen by now that Bun's the new hot thing. Countless videos, tweets, benchmarks, and more. It seems like Bun is not just the future, it's the now. In a lot of ways it is, and I'm very hopeful for a future that is focused around Bun. But that's not the whole picture. It's a lot of things that I don't think we're mentioning enough when we talk about Bun. I want to talk a bit about those. Scary truths, the unknown truths, and the uncertain future of Bun. Let's talk about all these things that no one's saying. The first ones I want to talk about are naming, because I don't think I get enough credit for being early on Bun time. It's silly, but I push pushed way back in like, I think it was like June or July last year that the bun runtime should absolutely be named bun time. I know it's silly, but with bun being a compiler, a package manager and a runtime, have some fun with the names. Regardless, that's become the number one piece of feedback that poor Jared gets now. So they understand they screwed up. They've learned their lesson. But another name people don't seem to understand is bun. It's not named after bundlers. It's not meant to just be a code name for bundle. Well, it kind of is. It's named after my friend Kipperly's bunny. Kip actually brought bundle to the bun launch event, which was entirely unexpected and hilarious to have the bunny that started it all at that event. Bun's named after bundle the bunny. Regardless, those, those aren't the things we're here to talk about. I want to talk about the more important details of how bun works. Something I saw a lot of pushback on was the difference and install times between PNPM and BUN. Specifically, a lot of people were commenting on how the speed of the network is going to become the bottleneck when you're doing that type of stuff. But why is the network the bottleneck? Both PNPM and BUN cache, and when I'm comparing the cache performance, PNPM's cache is significantly slower than BUN's, where BUN can install something in under a third of a second, and PNPM takes six plus seconds, both with caches populated. It's actually one of the important details that I think a lot of us missed that catches you in specific places. BUN doesn't check the network to make sure the packages it has are the correct versions. So if you specify use this version or greater, or you specify canary or latest as the version of something, Bun doesn't do a network check to make sure it is actually the latest version. PNPM, before it runs, will always do a network check to make sure the versions it has cached and it's going to install are correct based on package JSON naming and design decisions. One of the things they were going to do to solve this and get to skip a network request was default to the oldest version that honors the key so that if it's a specific version that's caret tagged, it doesn't have to check for a new version that follows Ember. It can just stick with that one. But as soon as they made that change, a lot of people were upset because this was going to break behaviors and expectations around installing packages. So they reverted that change almost instantaneously. Bun is a fresh start. And because of that, they're not going to get the same level of critique when they make these types of decisions to not check the network when they don't necessarily have to. This has already bit us with Create T3 app. If you've run it with Create T3 app at latest before, it's going to use the version that you did before, even if there's a newer version since. So things like at latest tags when you execute with bun are effectively ignored, which really, really sucks. I've already brought this up with Jared. It seems like they're going to fix it, especially for the bun X use case, but it's still an important thing to know when you're using Bun, that cache is performant and incredible and experienced as it is. It does have edges that you have to pay attention to. But it's also a huge part of why it's so fast because they're making these types of bold decisions to avoid whole IO paths that take much longer than just grabbing things from your file system. I also made a mistake in my Bun video where I talked about the files being copied on macOS versus linked on Linux. Specifically, most of these package managers with a cache, they reference that cache in the node module so they don't have to copy paste all of the modules all over the place. There is a built-in link in Bash and in most Unix systems where you can symlink a directory to another directory. So when you access things in it, it just hits another folder. But the built-in symlinking that is used by almost all of these things, it's not very performant on Mac. And as such, they're using the clone file API instead on Mac, which might sound like it's copying the files. It's not. It's a really strange way of copying a reference to a file that is kind of Unix specific. I think it's support on other things, but it's not something you should use very often. It's at this level that you start to see why Bun is so performant, because Bun's focus isn't doing things the way they were before, but faster. It's at a fundamental level, what's the fastest way to do this thing? What are the things that are costing us milliseconds of time? There's even a tweet, which I should find quick. The reason Bun is so fast is these insane optimizations that they're making. Things like setting up an enum of tagged pointers instead of storing the function pointers separately. It's a tiny overhead difference. But when you're making these levels of obsessive optimizations internally, the result's going to be insane performance. And it's this mindset where every single step, when given multiple options, Jared would ignore those and make a more performant option because none of the existing options were fast enough. And this level of understanding of system chaos is a huge part of why Bun is as performant as it is. It isn't just because they're using Zig. It isn't just because they're not using V8. It isn't just because it's machine code. It's because of this mindset this focus from the very start to make everything as obsessively performant as possible, because that's Bun's differentiator. 
as Mateo from the Node team says here, it's this level of obsession with every single tiny edge for performance that makes Bun as fast as it is. The reason Bun is faster than Node isn't because Node's engineers suck or they're not trying hard enough. It's because Bun started from scratch with a lot of focus and energy on making a new from scratch performance solution. And the Node team is a handful of unpaid open source maintainers that have been working really hard for well over a decade now to maintain support and compatibility across a gigantic ecosystem of people using Node in all sorts of ways, usually incorrectly. And that huge burden has fallen on Mateo and other members of the core Node team. That sucks because they're not being compensated enough for the work they're doing. Whereas Bun is VC funded. There is a lot of money poured into the Bun and Oven teams in order to help them take this time to pour this extra effort and focus in on a new from scratch solution. I don't think Node can have a moment like this simply due to the nature of the role of Node because Node can't break all of these things. They can't break how package JSON resolves stuff. They can't change how how the internal memory is managed around tasks and pointers. They need to make compatibility work. They need to fix fetch. They need to do so many other equally important, if not more important things. But if Node doesn't succeed, Bun doesn't succeed and vice versa. Because the goal of Bun is to show us and help us experience a Node ecosystem with an obsession around performance. And anybody talking shit on Node right now does not understand how important Node is for us getting here. And also how much the core Node team understands and appreciates the work that Jared and the rest of the other an SH Bun team is doing. This is an ecosystem and both are part of it and both sides appreciate each other. So don't think Bun shows how incompetent Node is so much as Bun is an incredible example of really, really performance focused developers making something we didn't think possible. But we do have to talk about something I touched on there a bit, which is the reality of Bun being a VC funded company and what that means for the future of Bun. I think the future of Bun is uncertain for a handful of reasons. One of those reasons is that it's a Zig code base. Zig is an incredible language that's enabled Bun to do so much but it's also going to be a barrier for contribution. We saw this with ES Build, which is a similar bundler focused on making it really, really quick to turn your TypeScript files with a bunch of packages into runnable ESM JavaScript code. ES Build was written by the CTO of Figma to solve the performance issues they had with their bundler chain. And he wrote it himself in Golang because that's the language he knew and that's how he could make it as fast as possible. But when we look at the contribution chart for ES Build, you'll understand my concern really quickly. Hopefully this clarifies my concern. <laughs> ES Builds isn't really a team. It's Evan Wallace and a bunch of other people who are helping contribute. But like realistically, the second biggest contributor having 13 commits plus 400 minus 50, this is Evan's project. This is scary because if y'all haven't heard the term bus factor, it's how likely is something to survive if one person gets hit by a bus? I don't think Evan's gonna get hit by a bus anytime soon, but man, the whole Vite ecosystem would collapse if he did because all of Vite is built on top of ES Build. Help. All of Remix is built on top of ES Build too. There are so many things that have ES Build as a core dependency. Yagus is the person on Node focused on performance. He's a part-time unpaid contributor to Node working really hard to make it performant enough to be a viable choice. The reason I'm on his Twitter right now is this tweet. This is a very real problem. This is a problem we have seen a lot in open source where we have a crazy amount of things built on top of some person's one-off side project. This is a legendary XKCD. And the person in charge of performance for Node posting this is very poignant, both because he's the person thanklessly maintaining this thing, and also because we're having this problem all over again. When we look at the reality of ES build and its contributions, if we look at Bun's GitHub, and again, I think Bun is doing better with this. I haven't actually checked the numbers though. This is way better, but let's be real here. What happens if Jared stops coding? He also has a company to run. And I know as a founder who runs a company and a YouTube channel and used to code disgusting amounts, if we go to my profile on GitHub, see how much more consistently I was writing code in 2021. You can even see when I started doing the company stuff much more here. This is when I was working on like my YC pitch. This is like when I got into Y Combinator and was doing all the business stuff. 2022, I was grinding a bit more because I was writing a lot of the code for paying, but getting more and more into like the company management too, because we had to run company stuff. And then 2023, yeah, I've been doing a lot more things outside of just writing code. And this is a reality of running not just any company, but a venture backed startup is that you are expected to continue scaling your business and brand. You're expected to find a path to profit and to run a company and to do investor updates, to hire people, to run a business. 
And that's time you're not spending coding. And if right now the majority of code is coming from the person who also has to make the majority of business decisions, you'll get to a point where those things conflict. Jared's done an incredible job managing this thus far, but he's largely done that by working absurd amounts of time. And that is a risk. And we need to be real about the risk here. For comparison's sake, here are the Node.js contributions. There's a huge variety here. Obviously, Ryan, the original creator, did a lot at the beginning, but quickly has been surpassed by many other contributors. I have heard both anecdotally and from looking through here that it is absurdly difficult to even break into the top 50 Node contributors. There's a lot of work going on from literally hundreds upon hundreds of people to make Node as great as it is. Oh, look, here's Anon. Node has survived over a decade now because they've managed and mitigated these types of risks really, really well. And they've built a solution that has its problems, but works incredibly well. They built one of the strongest ecosystems and one of the strongest package management solutions ever seen before it. And to this day, I'll die on the hill that NPM is better than almost anything that came before it. And we're only just now starting to see things that are slightly better. We have to be realistic about these risks and we have to understand the difference here between a venture backed alternative with a lot of money, a lot of energy and a lot of inertia versus something that's being maintained by free open source contributors that have been maintaining it for 10 years and plan to for another 10. The biggest risk right now isn't even just bun failing. It's all of the FUD and all of the complaints demotivating people on the node side too. There's potential damage outside of the immediate blast radius of bun that I didn't even expect. I honestly could not imagine the node team getting shit for bun because it seemed like bun was obviously this new, really cool thing. But here we are. I wanted to loudly voice my support of the core node team because they are working incredibly hard and there are fundamental differences in structure, incentive, longevity, and likelihood of success between Node and Bun. This does not mean you shouldn't use Bun, and this certainly doesn't mean you shouldn't be hyped about Bun, but it absolutely means you need to stop talking shit about the Node maintainers who are working so goddamn hard to make all of this possible. And if it wasn't for Node succeeding the ways it has, we wouldn't have Bun started in the first place. So know that when a venture-backed company has really energetic people reinventing things from the ground up, that is dope and awesome and we should be excited about it. But the incentives are different. We don't know if they're going to succeed or not. They're going to have to find some way to make money in order to keep going. VCs won't just keep pouring money in. I'm confident they can do that. I have a lot of faith in Jared, not just as an engineer, but as a leader. Good faith and hope and confidence even, isn't enough for an ecosystem to succeed. So if you're betting on Bun right now, hell, if you're relying on Bun to make an unperformant path in your code base performant, make sure you have a backup plan. Don't use Bun and let that put you in a place where you ignore performance issues. Don't use Bun and quadruple the number of unit tests you have because Bun runs them faster. Use Bun because you're excited about this new technology and you wanna make the bet. It's not a bad bet to make, but it is a gamble. And there's a reason Node has survived as long as it has. I think that's all I have to say about this. I still will be using Bun in a lot of stuff. I'm still friends with Jared. I think it's super, super cool. I just want us to be responsible with how we talk about these new technologies. And I went a little too far with my own video on it. So be responsible with your tech choices. I'll pin a video in the corner here all about that because I think we're always making gambles and bets with our tech. It's important to do such responsibly. What did you think about this? Is Bun overhyped? Am I going to get a lot of shit because I think we have to be responsible here? Bun is great. You should use it. You should use it responsibly. Thank you guys as always. Appreciate y'all for sticking by for this one. Let me know what you thought. Peace nerds.